Good morning friends! So this is my little cozy BNB that I am staying in for the course. So I never imagined that veterinary acupuncture would pop up on my 2024 bingo card, but here we are. My very first taste of acupuncture came courtesy of my grandfather. I remember him gifting me a printed article on acupressure points before I headed off to university in first year. It was his own way of saying, take care of yourself while you chase your dreams. He always mentioned these specific acupressure points to stop us feeling nauseous and also to improve blood flow and circulation. So. You know, I just listened to him. And when I joined my current practice, I discovered acupuncture was part of the rehab clinic. So it was a no-brainer to dive into the course and I kept an open mind because like you, I was a little skeptical at first with the effects of acupuncture. I decided to take the course and see for myself. Good morning friends! So this is my little cozy BNB that I am staying in for the course. Um, today's the first day. I should probably leave in a minute so that we can get there on time. I'm really excited. We are learning about veterinary acupuncture um, in Canine Partners. Canine Partners is the place where they have some dogs, I think horses as well. So that'll be really exciting. Um, I'll show you more about the Airbnb later, but <laughs> let's go before we're late! <laughs> One really cool thing about this course was that the dogs were provided by Canine Partners, a charity that partners disabled people with assistance dogs. We know dogs are great, right? But hearing about these dogs, the ones that make a huge difference to the lives of other people, was super amazing. They shared stories about how they trained the dogs to assist disabled people through daily tasks, providing them companionship, and essentially it's like a light at the end of the tunnel through challenging times and honestly so heartwarming to witness the benefits of the human-animal bond. Isn't it just crazy how dogs can connect to humans in a special way and they are so intelligent enough to carry out tasks, not only serving deaf and blind individuals, but also in seizure alert or diabetes alert. There are also studies of some dogs that can sniff older signatures in cancer detection. Prior to this course, we had online content and webinars to complete. And during the course, we had some lectures and practicals on identifying points in animals based on anatomical location uh, and also practicing on yourself. Here you can see that we have live demonstration on our canine friends. There was an equine section as well, but being a small animal vet, I just stayed with the groups with the dogs. Hello, so I just got back from day one and today was really interesting. We got a whistle stop tour through the history of acupuncture from how it originated and they still don't know where it originated from, most likely from the Chinese, but like Indians claimed, made some claims and also there was a note on tattooed acupuncture points in an ice man, ice caveman that was reported um, in some German text, so that's quite interesting. Anyway, we also learned about acupuncture points and stuck needles in ourselves just to have a feel of how the needling technique is and the dirty feeling, which is very interesting. I also got to see a live patient case, that dog that was suffering from some back pain and it's really cool that when he massaged the lumbar muscles, you could actually see some muscle spasms and it was quite realistic to see how in a bouncy black Labrador, how he managed to do acupuncture still and the dog tolerated quite well with treats. Um, but we also spent some time palpating different points in some golden retrievers. No, Labradors, they were Labradors. So yeah, very interesting and I'm really excited to actually get started as well. Tomorrow is day two, so we'll see what that holds. But for now, we're gonna have some dinner and yeah, just kind of reflect on what we've learned today. So yeah, time to eat! <laughs> So 
so I definitely did not expect this. It is so close to my Airbnb. How cool is that? Look at that. After the full day of learning yesterday, I decided to start my next morning a little earlier just to reconnect with nature. I went exploring around and stumbled upon some really cute sheep. Good morning, sheepies. And then I went back to the lake again to do some Headspace. Headspace is an app that I used religiously back in my final year of vet school and honestly it got me through those stressful days. Once starting work, I kind of let that practice slip away because of work and you know feeling so tired so this is me trying to get back into that routine. I always feel refreshed after doing a session of headspace because it just gives me that stillness and also grounds myself and lets me recharge and so I try to do it during work as well just to give me a break in between busy consults. Then came the final day. We dived into even more practical sessions, live demos, and also a few extra lectures. By then, I was buzzing with excitement to put everything I learned into practice. One of the key messages they said was to implement our skills as soon as we can, even if it means starting with our staff pets. Trust me, you don't want to fall into the trap of learning paralysis and lose that confidence. I left the course not only with a richer understanding of veterinary acupuncture, its principles, but also a renewed drive to bring these techniques to benefit my patients in everyday practice. Thanks again for joining me on this journey into the world of veterinary acupuncture. I hope you enjoy the behind the scenes glimpse into my training experience. If you like this type of content, let me know so I might make a video about veterinary acupuncture, the principles behind it, some research papers, and also personal cases of mine that have benefit from veterinary acupuncture. Until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.